In a pattern that has been consistent throughout the entire series so far, after not enjoying much of last week's episode, I was back on board with this one. There are still some things that I can't get behind, but overall I liked how this episode really spent the time to focus in on the characters. It's a shorter episode, but a good portion of it focuses on the relationship between Fury and his wife Priscilla. There's a brief flashback scene where we see the two of them together in France after the events of Avengers. On the surface, it's just a brief conversation between husband and wife, but we actually get a deeply emotional moment between them as Priscilla shares a poem with Fury. I love the inclusion of that poem because of how it relates to the overall theme of the series, of finding a home in a place where we feel like we belong and are loved. I haven't been blown away by any of the flashback scenes. I do feel like this series is just missing that wow factor to it. Like I mentioned last week, it's not fully committing to this spy thriller genre, but it's also trying to act like it is, so we're kind of left in the middle. But every time we go back in time, it serves a purpose for that episode and the series as a whole. It never feels like it's just a way to extend the runtime and get some more footage in there. The poem is called back to later on during another powerful moment between Fury and his wife. After learning that she's been told to kill Fury, the two of them have a moment at the table, and I appreciated how the scene was shot. It was all either over the shoulder or just straight on the character speaking, jumping back and forth through the entire conversation, never including them both in the same frame. It made their relationship feel very tense and distant, helping to create some stakes and tension in the moment, especially when they both place their guns on the table, making us assume that someone isn't walking out of there alive. We get the story of how Priscilla chose her form, and while I still wouldn't say I care a bunch about this character, this episode and the way it fleshed out did a lot to connect to the audience with her to the point where, if or when she dies, I can feel myself having some sort of reaction, because we've taken the time to get to know her on a deeply personal level. From what we've seen for the most part, Skrulls just take on a human form of someone random that they see, but Priscilla has a story to it, a deeper meaning behind the face that she now hides behind, a deeper reason for doing what she does. I don't know how much we'll follow her now that she's probably on the run from Gravik and the Skrulls, but I'm able to appreciate what the character has brought to these past two episodes. I also loved how Fury is just so blunt at times in the conversation. He isn't one to lie to someone to make them feel better. I mean, not many people would call their wife a mistake to their face, or ignore her question at the end whether he would have loved her if she didn't have this human form. You may not support it, but you gotta respect the honesty there. We get some brief scenes with Gaia in the episode, too. She was assumed to have been killed off at the end of the third episode, and while I was shocked, I accepted it and just moved on. So when it was initially revealed that she lived, I wasn't sure yet if I liked it or not. We're taking back to the end of last episode, and we see that she gave herself extremist powers before she fled the Skrull compound, allowing her to survive the gunshot. Although it wasn't anything special, I did like getting to see a bit as to how the machine works. And while I was cut off guard by her surviving, the scene between her and Talos later on did help me come around on it. Part of the reason I was confused as to why they would have killed Gaia off it's because Amelia Clark would have only come into the MCU for three episodes, and then be done, and I found that hard to believe. But the scene between her and Talos really lets Amelia Clark act and give this emotional depth to the character. I still think I need more time with her to get on the same level as someone like Priscilla, but I'm hoping we get that next episode after the shocking way this episode ended, with Talos' death. While Gaia was able to come back from hers, Talos' death did seem pretty permanent here, and if they brought him back to life for a second episode in a row, I feel like we as an audience couldn't believe any death for the rest of the show. I was surprised that they killed him off here, but I think I like the way it was done with Gravik and as a part of this larger action moment. And it was right after Talos helped to save the president, and then the soldier accepted him as an alien being with Fury, so I think that small moment will have a big impact down the line when it comes to Gravik's movements and the Skrulls search for a peaceful place to live. And now that Talos is dead, hopefully Gaia steps up to fill his shoes and we get a lot more of her in the final two episodes of the show. The last big thing to come out of this episode was the official reveal that Rhodey is a Skrull. I feel like it was left up to interpretation for a good portion of the episode, like during the conversation with Priscilla, we could assume he was a Skrull, but there was also just a chance that he was working with them for some reason. I did like how the reveal was done, and how it's kind of been different with each Skrull imposter so it doesn't feel too repetitive. The only thing I'm confused about is whether or not Fury knows it. He heard Rhodey's voice too when he was listening in on the conversation so he should know that he wanted Fury dead. And he mentioned that there was a Skrull imposter close to the president, but he never came out right and accused Rhodes of being a Skrull. This could just be him playing his cards close to his chest and waiting for something, but this kind of slow burn doesn't interest me at all that much, 
at least in the moment. If there's a better payoff later on, then maybe I'll come around on the process. What did you think of the fourth episode of Secret Invasion? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more MCU content. And remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always.